was it Dulles who was hanging around Germany a bit in the 30s and didn't mind it, so to speak? And then when, when Pearl Harbor happened, went, oh, okay, all right, all right, we'll help Dulles out. Dulles had a lot of connections into the what became the Nazi oh. community. He was so a was big him. part of why. I don't know if he was a quote-unquote Nazi sympathizer, but he was a big part of, of Operation Paperclip and the other sort of related operations that got the Nazis, the Ga- what we call the Galen Organization, sort of the Nazi spy chief getting his people over to the United States to work or stay over there and work on behalf of the CIA in spy operations. God, that is logically one of the most... It's one of the most difficult ethical, logical equations in the history of the United States, the Operation Paperclip. Ethically, everything about it's wrong. Logically, that got us to the fucking moon and a lot of other shit. Yes. But, oh my God, man. I mean, there were people who were literally like killing Jewish slaves one day and the next day they got a fucking mansion well, in Huntsville. I'll tell you, one of the most recent and fascinating but perplexing books and theories that have come out has basically pinned the assassination on intelligence, American intelligence basically working through the Nazi leftover groups. (laughs) So, and through a specific special forces operative by the name of Otto Skorzeny. Wait, the dude with the... Yeah, with the scar. With the dueling scar. Yes. Now, Otto Skorzeny, he... Wait a minute. I've actually gone through his papers at somebody's house. Wait a minute. I'm going to turn off the mics for one sec. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Thank you. So, Otto Skorzeny, explain how he got into this. So, first off, he's the special forces, special operations guy for the Nazis. And... Yeah, he was a Nazi. Yes. Like a, like a Nazi. And like so, he was Nazi the one who Nazi. was famous for uh, saving Mussolini in like a really daring operation well, obviously, it didn't work out long term, but like he flew in with commandos to get him out personally. And he's also very famous for the, the situation at the end of the World War II where he, where he arranged for Germans with fluent, perfect English to dress in American uniforms and try and do operations behind enemy lines. And he is to this day somebody who – somebody like uh, William McRaven, Stanley McChrystal, they'll say – that he is like the father, as disgusting as it is, of modern special operations. What happens after World War II? So he's actually captured. He's going to face the, you know, face the music for war crimes. But he basically gets let go, literally, mm-hmm. right? Like they let him out to say it's an escape, right? Because what happens is he then, in the, you know, if you, if you divide intelligence gathering into... Uh, analysis and so gathering and analysis and then covert operations the galen network which a lot of people are familiar with from How do you paper spell clip, that? g-e-h-l-e-n that's gathering and uh analysis right those are the nazis who you leave behind to spy and report right one way of potentially looking at scorzeni according to some researchers is he's the operations guy so if you want to do a dirty operation and you want to do it in Europe and you want somebody who knows all, knows who the people are who know how to get that stuff done and how to train them to get that stuff done, Scorzani might be the person you go with. And so there's been a book recently called Coup in Dallas and it's based on the work of a guy named Hank Alberelli and two people, Hank Alberelli, I used to communicate with him all the time. He and two other researchers, a good friend of mine, Alan Kent, and a woman named Leslie Sharp, who they continued Hank Alberelli's work after he died prematurely, uh, they were on the trail of this kind of thing. But what really turned it was uh, Alberelli and sort of what he thought was a peripheral investigation into the Kennedy assassination goes into a investigation of a – sort of a con man of all trades, a sophisticated kind of con man by the name of Pierre Lafitte, hmm. who had been used, if you believe the documentation, which I'll get to, 
was being used by multiple intelligence agencies because he could forge, he could recruit other criminals, he could even play act. He was a man in that kind of uh, sort of ilk. Al Borelli goes and finds his family. He's deceased Lafitte. He finds his family. His family provide Al Borelli with a, with a diary. And the diary has a whole bunch of cryptic entries, but clearly there's something going on there that can very easily be interpreted if the diary is not a hoax as Kennedy assassination related. And what it is, is the head of CIA counterintelligence operations, James Angleton, works with Otto Skorzeny in something called Operation Lancelot. Yes. To, yes. to assassinate JFK using the foreign... Angleton was in Italy, right? He had been for yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He also ran operations. That's something that's very commonly not known. Like everybody thinks he was just leading a mole hunt in the CIA, but he ran vest pocket operations. Everyone was scared of him because they were scared that he would accuse them of being the mole. So he got away with a lot. Um, but so this diary is supposedly about that and Scorzani separately there's some suspicious stuff with him and they link up in the diary. But the potential problem with this is not that Hank Alberelli's a fraud and it's not that um, Leslie and Alan Kent are frauds. It's that you're basing your story on a date book that was created by somebody who you admit was a world and is documented world-class con man yeah and even though you found that diary after he died who's to say he wasn't plotting up a scam for to eventually use and he just died before he could put into effect and his family provides what they think is something relevant but it's just a diary he faked up and unfortunately in the kennedy assassination we have experience with fake diaries we have experience with con men making very elaborate stories. We have experience with grifters who dig deep into the Warren Commission volumes and get information that like somebody maybe only I would know and you're sitting there impressed. We have all of that. And so until this thing gets fully authenticated in multiple ways, a lot of us are just, you know, we can't, we're just reluctant to dive in. It would solve, basically, the case if it were true. That is so bizarre. I mean, it's not. This whole case is really bizarre. Oh, it's, the, it, it's so much more complicated. I've been in the Kennedy assassination since I was 13 years old. And the rabbit, you know, and I've done King and I've done RFK. And I do, you know, I'm very into other true crimes, historical true crimes. I created a class. Oh shit! Yeah, about his called crime in history with a, with another teacher, and nothing comes remotely close. People would ask me, but you were into Kennedy assassination long before King and RFK, and I say the difference between the others and this one is I can't wrap my mind around JFK yet. There's so, it, and it's also the timing. But I mean, I got a chill up my spine when you said, said Scorsini because. That dude, I mean, there's there's strong evidence that there are people in Israel within intelligence who had to put aside massive personal beefs with him because of what he did in World War II and used even used him, had to, as a spy in Egypt when Egypt was working on their weapons program. Sure. And it was such a big deal that, oh my God, what's his name? Not Ellie Wiesel, the other one, Simon Wiesenthal, who who was like the greatest Nazi hunter of all time, who right. was a survivor of the Holocaust. It was such a big deal that that apparently Mossad had to approach him to say, "You need to take this guy off your target list because we have to use him real quick." And and Wiesenthal wouldn't do it, and they actually said, "You know what? No problem." But the fact that this guy was even running in circles with the quite literal enemy of, of of who he had done atrocious things to. Right. And then you you find him in the middle of this Kennedy. I mean, dude. Yeah. Well, he was Oof. actually used by Mossad as an assassin to assassinate people, as you said, in the 
to assassinate people in the Egyptian rocket program, oh. right? Um, and you hear mixed reasons as to why, but the one thing that, that supposedly he did it because similar to what you said, he actually didn't want them ass to assassinate him. Yeah. So he was willing to assassinate people for them. But after World War II, he trained uh, Egyptian like special ops and intelligence services. This is where, you know, this this argument that he's he's ostensibly a businessman, <laughs> but that uh, but that he's That's really a nice way to put it. He's even there, it's pretty clear he was into uh, unseemly type of arms dealing. But even beyond that, according to the you know, the, the research of people like Alberelli, but even more than that, maybe Ralph Gannis, uh, a colonel who was obsessed with him, I, I saw, who obtained his papers. Uh, Scorzani was, appears to be, although again, I, I don't think the evidence for this element is as strong, the a go-to guy for like, covert operations in Europe against the communists. Because you got to remember, the Nazis hated Jewish people. They also hated communists. They hated a lot of people. And so yeah. you could, it was easy to use, especially given the nature of the fighting between on the Eastern Front, it was very easy to recruit somebody like Skorzeny to go after the Soviets in the Cold War. And he would be, given his you know, background and skill, a pretty good guy to use. And if you asked me from everything I know, if you wanted to perform like an elite assassination in the 50s and 60s, he would be on my list of guys to pull it off as, a as an operator. Do you know how insane it would be? <laughs> like, if we talk about these, these files not being released because of what might be in them. Yes. Could you imagine? Could you even fathom? Yo, a full blown Nazi was yeah. behind the assassination of John. Could you like like that we recruited dude, and used, <laughs> dude? Dude, I fully understand why they're not releasing them if that's the case. Right. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.